Welcome to the next lecture on protein DNA interactions. And so the major learning objectives uh, of this lecture are basically to learn the major steps of the ChIP-seq protocol, learn what the limitations of ChIP-seq are, um, learn why we need control experiments uh, when we do ChIP-seq. And most importantly, when it comes to the analysis of uh, ChIP-seq data, one of the major applications of ChIP-seq is to uh, learn where uh, transcription factors bind along the genome in vivo. And so ChIP-seq data is oftentimes also used to gain insight into what the sequence binding preferences of each TF are. And so to really answer the question about you know, what DNA sequences does a TF bind, you really have to be able to uh, find some way to measure or look at, say, for example, an alignment of binding sites of a particular transcription factor and ask the question, uh, you know, what aspects of these uh, binding sites is, is different from what I expect by chance or different from the rest of the genome. Uh, and so there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's going to be a certain amount of material related to measuring, like how much information is there in an alignment? Um, how do we measure information and how do we use that to describe the binding preferences of a TF? So just as a super brief overview, uh, recall from the review lecture that uh, the core promoter uh, that is near the first exon of protein coding genes anyways, uh, is generally speaking sufficient for initiation of sort of baseline transcription. Um, it's obviously orientation dependent. It depends on which strand, uh, depending on which strand the promoter is on, uh, it, will it will yield transcription of uh, different target genes. Um, in terms of transcription factor binding sites, they are located in the proximal promoter, in the core promoter, but oftentimes they're also located uh, far upstream or far downstream of the uh, target transcription start site. Um, and so they can be both enhancing and repressing of target gene expression. Um, they're oftentimes, as we mentioned before, orientation independent in the sense that uh, they can sit on either strand and still function and target the same gene. Um, so methods for measuring TFDNA interactions fall into two broad categories, the in vivo and in vitro approaches. And so the goal of the in vitro approaches is generally to uh, more quantitatively characterize TFDNA binding events compared to in vivo. And so with the in vitro methods, you can um, you can try to estimate like TF consensus binding sites. Um, you can actually characterize their binding energy landscapes or the actual biophysical parameters that govern the binding events. Uh, the in vivo methods are, uh, they're more qualitative in the sense that, uh, again, you can kind of make a good educated guess about the consensus binding sites of TFs. Um, you can identify obviously where the TFs bind in vivo. And so you can get some idea of sequence specificity and the, the context of sequence specific interaction. So you can start to guess as to um, what other TFs might uh, either cooperatively or antagonistically interact with uh, your particular TF of interest. But again, the in vivo methods are more qualitative in the sense that you can't uh, really estimate these biophysical parameters uh, of these bonding events. And so in terms of this course, uh, we're mainly for the in vivo methods, we'll mainly talk about the chip seek method um, it's, it's briefly worth mentioning that techniques like DNA one hypersensitivity, uh, depending on how you use it, don't necessarily tell you exactly where one specific, uh, TF binds, but they tend to point to regions that are, for example, just generally open, uh, so open chromatin regions. And so generally speaking, uh, transcription factors can only recognize their cognate sequences uh, if they're generally in like open chromatin. And so using techniques like DNA one hypersensitivity, you can uh, identify regions that are more likely to be bound by TFs than, than others. Um, in terms of the in vitro methods, uh, today we'll primarily talk about SelectSeq and protein binding microarrays, uh, but it's worth noting that there are kind of methods that are uh, still give some kind of like reasonable throughput like Metomi. Uh, that we won't talk about, uh, but we'll also briefly mention uh, the electrophoretic uh, mobility shift assays because those are kind of the most historic uh, 
uh, methods that were used to characterize TFDNA interactions. So the electrophoretic uh, mobility shift assay is, is kind of the, the classic approach, uh, one of the first ones used to uh, characterize TFDNA interactions. And so in the classical uh, MSA assay, uh, what happens is that you, you make these solutions of protein and protein of uh, interest, so in this case, transcription factor, uh, and potential target DNA sequence. Uh, and then you, uh, you basically subject these solutions to electrophoresis. Uh, through some kind of like agarose or polychromide uh, gel. And so what happens is that, uh, generally speaking, you set up different lanes such that in these different lanes, you're varying the concentration of your transcription factor uh, of interest while you're fixing the concentration of DNA. And so what happens is that, uh, generally speaking, uh, during migration, free DNA uh, will tend to move uh, the farthest whereas uh, co-complexed transcription factor DNA uh, complexes will tend to move the slowest. And so generally speaking, the idea is that when you have these different lanes where you vary the relative concentration of transcription factor relative to DNA, basically as you increase the concentration of transcription factor, you'll see more and more complex forming uh, and less free DNA uh, traveling down the gel. And so the idea is that uh, by knowing how much concentration, relative concentration of TF you added to these solutions, and by seeing how much uh, free DNA travels uh, on this gel, you can then kind of quantitatively estimate uh, the parameters behind the, the govern uh, how the TF and DNA binding interactions work.